Welcome to Dark Knight Films Reviews and another Hammer Productions Night. Tonight, I will be reviewing Vampire Circus, released in 1972. Vampire Circus stars Adrian Corey, Lawrence Payne, Thorley Walters, Lynn Frederick, John Mulder Brown, Elizabeth Seal, Anthony Corlin, Richard Owens, Dominique Blythe, Robin Sachs, Layla Ward, and David Prowse. Vampire Circus was directed by Robert Young. Now this one was written by Judson Kinberg, based on a story by George Bext and Wilbur Stark. Now Wilbur Stark was also a producer on this film, so... Um, now this one... Starts off really, really well uh, with uh, the Count has seduced um, Professor Mueller's wife, Anna, and uh, has been getting her to lure the children away into their, this castle that the Count is living at. And the townsfolk are afraid of the Count and they're just basically letting him run the town. And uh, the professor sees his wife luring this child away. And he tries to follow to stop it, but he's too late. Um, she gets into the castle and by the time he convinces the townsfolk to do something about it, um, because this isn't the first child that they've done this with. Um, they get in there and it's too late. The child has been killed and big fight happens with the Count and the Count puts up a hell of a fight here. before they finally um, vanquish him. <laughs> now that is something to note because I will get back to that in a later scene that happens later on. But anyway, he is killed and with his dying breath, the Count curses the townsfolk. And they drag Anna out and start whipping her. But they let her survive, and she runs off back to the castle as they prepare to torch the place and burn it down. While they're doing this, though, she drags the Count's body down to the basement area of the castle. And they burn the place down. It is a great start for the film. Um, all this happens prior to the credits even rolling. So very good start for the film. Um, really sets the stage for what is to come. And it's pretty cool because uh, later on, you know, you get uh, the in the more present day setting of the story, which is only a few years after, um, like 15 years or so after um, them killing the Count. Um, and it's apparent that this so-called curse that the Count has put on the people is definitely in effect and people are dying. And we have Richard Owen's character of Dr. Kirsch, who doesn't believe in any of the curses. And uh, he wants to um, try and sneak out of the village um, to get help for them. 
from maybe a, find a cure or something outside the village um, with the help of his son, Anton, played by John Walter Brown. The town, um, or village, if you will, is surrounded by soldiers, a blockade or something that will shoot anyone who tries to get out of the village because they don't want whatever disease is killing the village to escape. Um, but with the help of uh, Anton, his son, he ends up making it out. But around the same time that this happens, a odd circus arrives in town, led by this gypsy woman, played by Adrian Corey. Why have you come? To steal the money from dead men's eyes. <laughs> this, these parts of it are really cool just because they are setting up that this vampire circus is led by Anna, who is this adult version of the character, but she they, nobody knows this because she looks different. It's been 15 years later. She looks she's played by a different actress, of course. May I present your Burgermeister and his beautiful family. She is planning with some of her little vampire circus freaks and everything to revive the Count. So they're taking revenge on the town while draining the blood of some of the children to get revenge on them, but using that blood to try and bring back the Count. Um, very good, interesting setup and very well, well acted and well done. Um, I think the ending really lets the film down. Um, the... Resurrection part of the count for the ending of the film. Um, it's it, everything seems to be perfect as far as how it is going along, and then there is this moment where um, Anthony Corlin's Emil is getting ready to drain Lynn Frederick's. Dora Mueller, so that he can get the blood to drip out onto the Count to get him finally resurrected. And suddenly, for no reason whatsoever at all, he just all of a sudden misses her somehow, or whatever the hell happened here. I was like, what the hell was that about? Um, I mean, if they were going to imply that Anna suddenly had a change of heart and tries to save her daughter, it didn't look like it. It didn't look like she pushed her to the side and did it. It just looked like it just looked like Emil just you know lunges forward and just completely misses his intended target and hits her. Um, so that was a bit um, of, oh, what the fuck happened um, moment. And then when the Count finally does resurrect, you think, oh, wow, we're going to get this slam bang big time finale now, right? No. No. Um, he puts up less of a fight in this sequence than he did in the beginning. He's resurrected. He does a cool moment where he grabs a torch. And 
that's about all he gets. He just gets offed real quickly after that. <laughs> Which is pretty disappointing considering that he was pretty badass at the beginning of the film. Um, so that kind of hurt the, the overall film for me. Um, the ending did. Um, cast in this is great. Uh, Thorley Walters playing Peter, the, uh, mayor of the town, um, is playing it straight. Um, he's playing a serious character in this and does a really good job here in this. Um, as does, uh, a lot of the other actors. Uh, Lawrence Payne is great as the professor, Professor Albert Mueller. Um, a Adrian Corey is great as the gypsy woman slash the older version of Anna. Um, Anthony Corlin is great as Emile, the basically lead vampire that kind of takes over after the Count is gone. Um, and it's funny seeing, you know, Anthony Corlin playing that character because um, in a previous Dracula film, he was the hero against Count Dracula. So in this film, he is a vampire in it. So, um, went from playing the hero to playing the villain. So, um, but Robert Young directs a damn good film. Um, and the script is really good up until those end moments where it just kind of loses itself, um, in the finale. But overall, I think this is uh, a pretty good, um, Hammer uh, vampire film away from the Dracula series. Um, it's not going to make my list of a uh, top 10 horror, you know, it, it wouldn't reach a revised list of the greatest um, Hammer films in horror like I've already done. So there, there won't be a revised list with this film on it. I'm spoiling you on that, but it's really good. So I am going to give um, Vampire Circus from 1972, I am going to give this film a 7.9 out of 10. Um, if you've never seen it, um, I would suggest checking it out, but temper your expectations for the ending. Um, anyway. Have you seen the movie? Do you disagree with my review if you have? Or do you agree? Let me know in those comments down below. And, as usual, if you enjoyed this video, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to click that bell icon so you can be notified about future videos just like this one. And while you're by the subscribe button, click that join button and become a Dark Knight fan. Well, that's it for another Hammer Productions Night. If you missed last week's Hammer Productions Night, check out the link up here to get caught up on that one. Or if you missed any of the other Hammer Productions Night, be sure and check out the playlist right here to get caught up on any of them that you have missed.